In 1900, nobody knew what a hybrid was, but very quickly, those first organized plant explorers discovered hybrids, and they discovered that in crops such as corn, the hybrid could bring you immediate, uh, well, you could immediately fix traits that were difficult to fix by the, class, by the uh, open pollinated method. And so it was in the development of hybrid crops that we first began to think of controlling pollination and in, in large scales. And to produce these basically fleeting genetic combinations that we call hybrids that are only stable for one generation. And then that all the qualities of that hybrid um, break apart and you don't have that plant anymore. So this was discovered by the corn breeders and they realized that this was a way to make big advances in things like yield and protein quality and oil quality and disease resistance and resistance against lodging. All these things could happen very quickly using hybrid breeding techniques and that really excited the breeders. What really excited the seed companies was that this produced the hybrid became a um, well it was a built-in protection since the hybrid could not be reproduced uh, from its own seed. The hybrid could only be reproduced if you had the parent lines you bring together two parent lines and that creates your hybrid. If you don't have the parent lines, you can't make the hybrid. And the parent lines never need be released to your competitors. And so this became a lock and key for uh, seed companies to be able to have products without other people just picking them up and reproducing them. And so this is what happened by 1965 Everything that could be made into a hybrid was in the process of being made into a hybrid. Uh, <clears throat> and this is where the end of the golden age of plant breeding begins, is because no longer were scientists trying to develop stable new varieties of plants that could be constantly evolving along with the farming system. Instead, we went toward hybrids in which the hybrid cannot evolve. It's, it's a dead end. The only thing that can evolve are its parent lines. Because of the nature of, um, of these crops, when you, the parent lines become weak by inbreeding. And so the parent lines themselves are not useful in agriculture. The parent line would not make you a carrot that you could eat, either one of them. It's only when those parent lines come together to make the hybrid that you make a good field crop. Well, this took farmers out of the picture. Uh, suddenly farmers could no longer do selection within the field. Farmers could not keep their own seeds. Um, a farmer in a particular climatic zone could no longer adapt those crops to their specific farming site and system once the hybrid technology was begun. And this is when we begin to see uh, chemical companies and pharmaceutical companies take a strong interest in seeds, that is, as something to buy, seed companies. Because the chemical companies realized that these hybrids were a way to lock farmers into, basically it was a vendor lock-in. The farmer had to keep coming back to the company each year to get those seeds. And they realized that if they had farm chemicals that were intended to work with those seeds, then they would have a combination where they could sell a farm chemical as a package with a seed. And so we can see that during this period of time is when 
uh, all the little seed companies that were once independent seed companies begin to get bought up by larger entities. And this is the beginning of that. And this has carried on till now. Virtually all seed companies are owned by about four or five chemical and pharmaceutical entities. Once this happened, the role for the classical plant breeder working in the public interest was pretty much extinguished.